Good morning. Welcome to Super Sunday Club this Sunday morning. I hope you've had a good week and you're looking forward to some games and activities together today. So today, I thought we'd start off with a bit of a game. And it's a game of hopscotch. I don't know if this is something you play very often. It's not something I've played for a long time. But I rediscovered it today and I had much fun. So for hopscotch, what you need to do is to, to mark out a, a play area. And for this, people often use chalk onto paving slabs. I didn't have any chalk, so I was wondering what I could use. And I looked around and I found some wool. So I've ended up marking out my pitch with some wool. And discovered that blue wool and green grass doesn't show up very well on video, so my apologies. But the idea is it should look a little bit like this. So you have one and then two, then three and four together, five, six and seven together, and eight. And if you've ever played hopscotch, you'll know that the idea is to take a little stone or some sort of marker and throw it firstly into square one. And that means that you can't jump into square one. You have to hop over into square two. Then you can put your left and your right feet down onto three and four, hop onto five, both feet down onto six and seven, hop onto eight. Then you need to come back the way and you come all the way down and when you get to one, you pick up your marker and then you have to jump back to the beginning. Then you start again by throwing your marker on two. Of course, this time you can't stand on two. So here's my attempt at trying it. I'm sure yours will be a lot easier and a lot better. But this is my attempt. So why don't you, you pause and then see if you can make your own pitch. The idea of a hopscotch is we've got our eight squares. I throw this, the little marker into the first square. Now I can't now step in that square. So I'm going to have to hop over to square two. Down, up, down, up. I need to come back for it. Tuck it up. And I still can't go into that square. So I need to hop right over. This time, I'm going for square two. Oh, just got it in. No more. So I'll step into one, and then I've got to jump over two. Oop! Back. And then I need to pick up two and jump over. This time it's going to square three. Oh, just. So I can go one, two, that way. Move over. I can't go into square three, remember. And then I go into square four. And you basically carry on like that until you've done all eight squares. That's as easy as it is. So if you haven't paused, then go pause now and see if you can make your own hop swatch um, pitch out and then have fun doing that. Come back to me once you've done though. So how was that? Did you manage all eight squares? Were you puffing as much as me? I bet you weren't. <laughs> so today's story is about someone who unfortunately couldn't have fun in that way. It was about a man who couldn't walk. And since birth, he hadn't been able to walk. And that must be really difficult to miss out on lots of fun and games as a child and growing up. So let's hear what's happening in our story today. Stories of the Bible. Peter heals a beggar who can't walk. This is Peter. Hey who was one of Jesus' disciples. Yep. Peter told people about Jesus Peter and John went to the temple to pray. As they neared the temple, a man who couldn't walk from the time he was born was being carried in. Each day, the man was put beside the temple gate so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When the man saw Peter and John, he asked them for some money. Please help. Peter said, look at us. The man looked up at them eagerly thinking that they would give him some money. But Peter said, I don't have any money for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. Then Peter took the man by the hand and helped him up. As he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. Woohoo! He jumped up and began to walk, then walking, leaping, and praising God. Come on! He went into the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. Wait, is that 
I think so. When they realized he was the man who couldn't walk who had been sitting outside the gate asking for money, they were absolutely amazed. Wow! Peter asked the people, what's so surprising about this? Why stare at us as though we made this man walk by our own power? He reminded all of the people that it was God's power who healed this man and encouraged all of them to turn from their sins and follow God with their whole hearts. So this account is taken from the book of Acts chapter 3 and you can read it for yourself. I wonder what you remember about Peter. He was a fisherman until Jesus called him to come and follow him. He became one of Jesus' disciples and saw Jesus do amazing things. Heal people, calm storms, bring people back to life. And he even came back to life himself. Peter had seen Jesus alive again. And Peter knew that Jesus was going to leave a helper for them. He promised a helper and this helper was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came and gave him the power of God. And we see this here in Peter, an ordinary man, but could do extraordinary things, not by his own power, but through God's power, through the Holy Spirit. And here we see him heal a man who can't walk. And the man starts to praise God and thank him for all he's done. And he goes dancing and leaping and praising God into the temple. Where everybody can't believe what's happened. They knew this man. They'd seen him for years. They knew he couldn't walk. Yet Peter and Jesus' power had healed him. Peter sees his opportunity. And he tells the people all about Jesus. They say they need to trust Jesus. They need to get to know him. They need to say sorry for the things that they've done wrong and turn and follow him. Wow. A powerful message 2,000 years ago and is powerful today. The Holy Spirit is still at work today and we can ask Jesus for that helper. Now, I thought it'd be quite good to do a little bit of time of prayer. And one of the popular prayers that we do at Super Sunday Club is the Sweetie Prayers. Now, I don't know if you have the Sweeties around, but what we do is we pass around a little um, box of Sweeties. And when the music stops, and if you're holding it, you pick out a Sweetie and you say something that you'd like to thank God for. And I thought we could do something like that. Maybe you don't have Sweeties around, that's okay. You could just pass around a toy or a, a ball and um, then when the music stops, what is it you would praise God for? Just like the man in the story, he was able to praise God for his healing. What can we praise God for? What can we say thank you for? So let's do that just now. So if you go and get something to pass around, pause me while you do that and then we'll do the little prayer together. Okay, have you got something? Let's pass it around. Thank you, Lord, for this fine day. Thank you, Lord, for this fine day. Thank you, Lord, for this fine day. Right where we are. Okay, who's got it? Thank you for... What would you like to say thank you for? Okay, let's pass it, pass it around again. Thank you, Lord, for this fine day. Thank you, Lord, for this fine day. Thank you, Lord, for this fine day. Right where we are. The person holding it this time, what would you like to say? Thank you to God for. Thank you for. Brilliant. And you can keep going on singing that and passing it around and giving thanks to God. But we're going to move on just now and do a little bit of a craft. So for this craft, you will need some cardboard. Now, I had a Rice Krispies box, so <laughs> that is what I've used. Um, you need some scissors, you need some colouring in pens, and a bit of string or thread, or I've got my blue wool again. We use for everything today. So, what you need to do is, on the card, draw a wee outline of a person. 
Now, this is my attempt. You can give it a go too. And the legs are going to be slightly detached because we're going to cut them out separately. So if you can fit in a body template, just a bit like I've got the ear with the arms out wide and a smiling face because it's a man who prays on God because his legs are working again. And then if you can colour it in and then cut it out, but you cut it out from two pieces of cardboard. So have it folded over. So when you cut it out, actually you get two outlines of the man. It's a bit like I've got there. And then if you fold them a wee bit down the middle lengthways, see I've my fingers there, I'm, I'm pushing them together a wee bit so he's, he's a wee bit more 3D. Fold them like that. And then we're going to put some thread in. So put your thread or wool or string down the centre of the body and attach it to the legs. So the legs are, are, are different to the body. Attach them to the top of the legs, just like I've done there, and a little bit of sellotape just to hold the wool or the thread in place at the top of the body. Don't, don't stick the, the legs on, we want the legs to move, you see. So no sellotape for the legs. And then sellotape the other part of the body onto the back so that it's now a kind of 3D body. So you've got the back on and the front on and sellotape it together at the arms. Don't sellotape the bottom of the, the body. As you can see, what's going to happen is if you move the, the man from left to right, his legs can swing from left to right, like he's dancing and praising God, just like he was in the story. Now, I just decided because I had quite a lot of my Rice Krispies box left that I would make a little um, backdrop for him. So you could have them dancing about outside. I've got some trees in the sun there. Or you could have them dancing around the temple. And you can finish it off like that if you would like. There is our man who was healed. And he jumped and he danced and he praised God. So we are going to finish off with exactly that. We're going to praise God with a song. And this song is going to jump up and down. Going to spin right around, going to praise your name forever. I'm going to shout out loud, I'm going to deafen the crowd, I'm going to send my praise to heaven. So, if you are on Facebook, I will put the connection for the song um, above. If not, then if you just Google the jump up and down, I've put the, the actions video on the link because I think it's quite good to see the actions. There's some quite good actions. So join along, sing along and praise God because we are thankful for all he gives us and all he does and that he hasn't left us. He sent his Holy Spirit as a helper. So until next week, keep praising and we'll see you then. Take care. Bye.